Hello, this is Mike Revel from dadcooksdinner.com, and this is how to rotisserie a beef tenderloin. My whole beef tenderloin weighed seven pounds, but that included the chain, a piece of fat, gristle, and meat that runs along one side. I asked my butcher to trim that off for me, because it's not good as part of the roast. What that leaves me is a five pound trimmed beef tenderloin. I'm seasoning it with salt the night before I'm actually going to cook it. Why do this? Letting the salt rest on the roast overnight lets it penetrate deep into the meat, giving you kind of a dry brining effect, and it seasons the roast all the way through. Make sure you get the salt all over, especially on the ends. I set it on a rack on a roomed baking sheet, so there's good airflow and I catch any drips. And then I move it into the refrigerator where it will rest until tomorrow. An hour before it's time to cook, I start prepping the roast. A tenderloin has some problems on the rotisserie because of how it is so thin on one end and so thick on the other. I'm going to solve that by folding the tailpiece over to thicken that end up a bit and then folding the whole roast over so that it meets the headpiece there. I'm going to cut at that bend right there and truss that piece up against the other one giving me one thick and relatively even roast. The advantage to this bigger roast is it will have time to brown on the outside before it cooks through in the middle. I want it nice and medium rare with good browning. Now I need to truss it every couple of inches down the length. I cut my butcher's twine about three times the width of the roast so I have extra room to tie. And then I start with one tie about an inch in from the end of the roast. I give each tie an extra loop the first time, which helps hold it in place against the roast while I finish off the knot. Now repeat every couple of inches down the length of the roast, making sure to get the two ends of the extra piece that we cut off earlier so that they are tied tightly to the main body of the roast. Trim any extra twine from the ends of the knots so that they don't flop around and burn in the grill and you'll have one thick piece of roast. We want to run the spit between those two pieces until we hit the head, and then we've got to push the point of the spit through. Now don't forget that first fork. It's really annoying to have to undo all this and add it on later. Push between the two roasts, and when you get to the head, it's going to take some extra force. Push hard, and watch out for your fingers. You don't want to spear yourself. There we go. Roast all the way through. Now run the fork kind of around the edges of the roast. I use it more as a bracket than pushing it into the meat itself. Slide on the second fork. Tighten it down. And the beef tenderloin is secured to the spit. Next comes the horseradish mustard crust. Brush it all over the roast. Don't be shy. If I wasn't doing this on a video, I might be using my hands just to really get it over there. This is also why I like trussing and spitting the roast first. Grabbing the spit makes it easy to move the roast around and get the mustard all over it. The tenderloin is ready to cook. I know it doesn't look like much, but the heat of the grill will make that into a gorgeous crust. Now let's set up the grill. First I take out my grill grates to make sure there's clearance for the spinning piece of meat. I probably don't need to do that with the beef tenderloin, but it's a habit from all the other larger pieces of meat I cook. Then I add the rotisserie motor, center the drip pan in the grill, and set the grill up for indirect high heat by turning on burners number one, number six, and my infrared rotisserie burner in the back of the grill, which we're going to use for the first half hour to help brown the roast. Close the lid and let the grill preheat for 10 minutes. And now it's time to cook the beef tenderloin. Plug the spit into the motor. Make sure it's sitting properly in the notches on the side of the grill. Make sure the drip pan is centered, and then turn on the motor and watch it go through one complete rotation just to make sure everything is set up properly, the roast isn't flapping loose on the spit, and the spit isn't binding against the side of the grill. Close the lid and keep the lid closed as much as possible while cooking. We'll check the roast in a half an hour. It's been 30 minutes and the roast is browning nicely. So I'm going to turn off my infrared burner 
and let the burners on the main body of the grill finish the cooking. I'm also going to check the temperature while I'm in here just to see how we're doing. It's about 88 degrees, maybe 90 degrees, depending on where I measure it. So I think it needs about another 10-15 minutes. I'm going to close the lid and let it finish cooking. Oh, don't forget to turn the motor back on. That would be bad. 45 minutes of total cooking time, and I think we're done. I wanted to measure 120 degrees Fahrenheit measured in the thickest part of the roast. I'm measuring in a couple different places, and I'm getting readings between 116 and 118 degrees. I think we're good enough. I don't want to overcook it, so I'm going to call it done. Time to take it off the grill. The first thing you need to do is get the roast off of the spit and get the trussing twine cut away from the roast. As the roast cools down, that mustard crust is going to harden, and the longer you wait, the more of that crust you're going to lose when it sticks to the spit or the trussing twine. Be careful with that spit. It is a branding iron right now. I set it down on some hot pads just to make sure it doesn't leave marks on my counter. The trussing twine can be difficult to find. Sometimes it buries itself inside the crust. Once you find it, snip it once, and then unwrap it and pull it loose from the roast. This will leave most of the crust on the meat, but no matter how careful you are, some of it is going to stick to the twine, so don't sweat it too much. Once all the twine is removed, let the roast rest for 10 minutes to cool down a little bit. Hot off the grill, all the fibers in the meat are really tight, and it'll just squeeze all the juices out onto the cutting board. My roast had its rest. Let's see how we did. Oh, I like the looks of that. There we go. Perfect medium rare, maybe even a little rare, all the way through. Nice and juicy. There you have it. One beef tenderloin on the rotisserie with a horseradish mustard crust. This has been Mike Robel from DadCooksDinner.com. Thanks for watching. Oh, did I just mess that all up? I did just mess that all up.